So we are now going to move over to our community, uh, our community case study. So today we have Kartik, and I'll pass it over to you, sir. Thanks, Maggie. Uh, let me share my screen and kind of walk through our presentation. I feel like every time I come here, I come away with more work to do. <laughs> uh, so it's a testament to some of the cool things that's happening. Uh, but anyway, um, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Kartik and I'm one of the tech leads that included Hell uh, working on the data platform. Uh, more specifically, my team focuses on making the interface between humans and data as simple as possible. Uh, so today I'll be talking about how we've leveraged Data Hub and some of the custom workflows we've created around Data Hub, specifically by embedding different tools that we have directly into Data Hub to make our workflows more seamless. Uh, to, so, so to start, like what is Included Health and why is data so important here? Uh, included Health is a new kind of healthcare company uh, and we're focused on giving our members a service where all of their medical needs are all included under one company. Uh, and so I know that's kind of vague, so like, what does that really mean? Um, it could be as simple as, you know, finding a new primary care doctor, whether that's in person or virtually, or getting expert medical opinions on their more complex medical conditions. Uh, we also provide a plethora of other services, such as uh, claims advocacy, uh, virtual behavioral health visits, uh, and then advocating for health equity for all of our members. Uh, as you can imagine, in this like complex ecosystem of services that we provide, one of the core ingredients for success is clean, usable, managed, and understandable data. And so, uh, you know, given that, like, what is the focus of our data platform? Uh, at the end of the day, it's really about simplifying existing data and making sure that we deliver the right care at the right time for all of our members uh, based on deep understanding of our data. And so, as I mentioned earlier, one of the focuses of my team specifically is the interface between humans and data. And as such, we've kind of taken an extensive advantage of the amazing like open source and closed source uh, tooling that's available to really like make this workflow as simple as possible. And to do that, we've kind of leveraged a lot of different tools. And here's a couple examples of some of the tools that we have it included health. Uh, we use Looker for dashboards. Uh, we use Jupyter Hub for more programmatic uh, interactions with data. And then query book by Pinterest to do kind of like ad hoc reporting and SQL based data exploration. And I'll kind of show like some screenshots and examples of what some of these tools look like if you're unfamiliar with them. Um, and, you know, we started this project or this platform about two years ago. We kind of like rebuilt it and we, we had no data to now we have almost 7,000 different data entities that are within our ecosystem. Uh, and so pretty quickly it became a, you know, you can't just use the tools because the workflows kind of cross different tools and different domains. And we really needed uh, a tool like Data Hub that acts as the search and discovery platform uh, to kind of like enable the workflows that we really want uh, at scale. Uh, so to give a quick example of what these workflows look like at Included Health, um, you know, a user typically starts with searching for, you know, existing data uh, of various entity types through Data Hub, uh, perhaps reading through the metadata that's been ingested through Data Hub or has been added later on by owners or uh, users of that data. But as you can imagine, as soon as you need to interact with the data or if you need to update any content, you kind of jump from Data Hub to your uh, tool of choice. And so you're, you know, I typically have tons of like tabs open and I'm kind of like hopping back and forth and I lose track of like what I'm doing and uh, it becomes a little frustrating. And so um, again, like how do we simplify this, right? Like that's, that's the mission uh, of our team. How do we make this simpler and easier to use? And so the way I think about this is like, well, we have this like great search and discovery platform through Data Hub, and how do we bring the rest of the tooling that we have into that ecosystem in a way that it seems more seamless? 
Um, and that's where embedding really comes into play. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, and so uh, the hypothesis is that if we can embed the right context in the right location, uh, we can have a majority of our users never leave Data Hub. Obviously, the tools of choice will have better functionality when you're working within the tool. And so when you're authoring or interacting with uh, rich data, it will always be uh, preferred to work within tool, the tool of choice. Um, so the first example I want to show is where we've embedded Looker dashboards and charts directly through Data Hub and uh, the workflow uh, from dashboard to charts becomes seamless. Uh, so here's a, a quick example where you can go to a Looker dashboard in Data Hub and that, that exact dashboard gets embedded. Uh, if you want to understand the metadata, uh, the ownership, the domains it falls in, all of that content is explorable here. And it's really nice because when you go to a dashboard, you want to know all of the metadata and Looker specifically doesn't give you a lot of context to you know, add a lot more text or add a lot more context than um, some of the primitives they provide. So taking advantage of the UI that Data Hub provides is nice while giving the rich like visualizations that Looker uh, gives. And then uh, one of the example workflows uh, that we see here is that you know each Looker dashboard is composed of different charts, uh, charts, explores, or tiles. Um, and so using the lineage, we can go from a Looker dashboard all the way to a chart and see what the, the content of that chart is. And so if you wanted to explore from you know, like this particular tile and I want to slice it by something, it's really easy to do that here and not have to jump into another tool. Uh, and then because this is all through single sign-on, if I was the owner of this dashboard, I can also make quick updates here uh, and never have to leave Data Hub. So that's one tab that I can close. Uh, the second uh, example I want to show is querying. Um, so as I mentioned, we used uh, Query Book by Pinterest to do like ad hoc execution of uh, SQL data. And so this uh, particular tool can connect to lots of different um, SQL execution engines in the background from SQL Alchemy to BigQuery to whatever you really need. Um, and so in this example, what we're showing is we've added a data exploration tab at the very top um, where you, you know, people can come in, write custom SQL, execute it, see the uh, actual data and kind of gleam understanding of it. Um, Another example is notebooks. Uh, I mentioned you can do like ad hoc reports through a uh, query book. And so here's an example where, uh, you know, we have a SQL query that we've written and the output of it produces a chart. And so if you wanted to share the different, um, you know, reports that people have compiled, uh, instead of, you know, throwing a bunch of different links to the different tools, we now have the ability to send just the Data Hub link to people. Uh, and this enables us to drive more traffic through Data Hub. Uh, more people will add the metadata that's required instead of having to jump back and forth between tools and have the perpetual question of, well, where do I add my metadata? Um, and so increasing traffic through one portal is always uh, one of our goals. Um, and as you can see, there's tons of interactivity that we get from this tool uh, by embedding it rather than having uh, to jump back and forth. Um, and lastly, uh, I also mentioned data sets. Um, I know there's the profiling aspect of Data Hub, but what if you want to do more than that, right? Like you want to query the ta uh, table, you want to join it to existing tables. Uh, and kind of have a more rich way of interacting with the data than just the profile view. Uh, we've again embedded the query execution tab per data set where it uh, you know, pre-populates uh, the query for you. And so you could imagine an example use case of this could be uh, looking at like query history and saying, I want to, you know, this person has run this particular query a lot. Uh, let me go look at it again and kind of like have an easy way of getting to the right data at the right time to make the actual like 
uh, life cycle easier for people. So they're not wor worrying about the tools, but they're worrying about how do I work with data and how do I deliver insights and value to our company faster? So to summarize, uh, we've instead of having bespoke tools that are sitting outside of our ecosystem, we've really brought them together under one platform uh, or what, what it looks like to be one platform for a lot of people. And we've abstracted away the, the need to think about these different tools and like what the URLs for each of them are. Uh, and really Data Hub becomes the hub for all data. Uh, obviously I've gone a little overboard with embedding uh, so maybe we can clean up some of our workflows, but I think there's enough value here that uh, uh, hopefully it will spark some of your own uh, ways of embedding different workflows into the tool. Um, and so I also wanted to talk a little bit of gotchas around embedding content because this is a web-based product and, you know, uh, hacking and like, uh, like man in the middle of attacks are always kind of a concern. Um, what are the, some of the things that you have to work around if you do want to embed content? And uh, what are some of the things that we had to kind of work around um, to get there? Uh, the first is like authentication. Um, every one of our tools uses single sign-on based authentication. And so one of the things that you'll quickly find is uh, for any tool that needs to set cookies, uh, they will be blocked because of, you know, uh, I think it's like from 2020 or something, uh, there's like a security patch to not allow cookies. And so you have to explicitly set specific headers um, that's described in the link here. And I'll, I'll share this presentation. So if you do end up needing to embed and you wanna look at the content, um, you can feel free to look, take a closer look. Um, the other one, uh, which is like, I'm not a web developer. So uh, this is the bane of my existence, which is, like uh, the course issue, uh, which is like cross embedding of different websites into one page. Um, thankfully, we have, uh, you know, we use Kubernetes to launch everything. And so it's easy to add new uh, proxies through Nginx. Um, that's been how we've solved it. Uh, if there's better other ways to solve this, uh, I would love to hear it. Um, and then finally, um, we do use load balancers a lot uh, in lots of different places around our embedded sites. And so one of the things you'll see uh, specifically if you use Flask, for example, is there's some like issues with proxies and uh, how Flask works. And so you'll specifically have to set some headers to make sure Flask works the way you intend when it's embedded. Uh, again, like not, not like super hard, but uh, you know, it's not something that you want to spend more than an hour or two on. So hopefully this will help unblock you if this is a feature that you're interested in, in uh, implementing for your own workflows. And yeah, uh, that is the end of my talk. Uh, hopefully this was interesting. Um, if you're interested in getting, you know, like a more specific demo or just understanding more about how uh, we use embedding uh, feel free to reach out to me on Slack. That's the Slack handle in the Data Hub uh, Slack channel. And then in general, if you're interested in included health and kind of what we're doing here or contributing to the open source community, uh, there is the careers page on our uh, company website or feel free to reach out to me directly as well. Um, and that's it for me. Uh, if there's any questions, I can take them or if we're short on time, I'll hand it off to the next presenter. Yeah, I think um, so. Ben uh, had a question around um, forking. Did you have to fork Data Hub? Yes, uh, we did need to fork it. Um, we also do a lot of different custom things with Data Hub, and so uh, there's been lots of different, uh, you know, things we've edited. Awesome. I love this so much, Kartik. Thank you so so much. This is insanely amazing. Um, I'm also a huge fan of keeping people in Data Hub for as long as possible as well. So right there with you. Um, lots of love in the chat. So I recommend taking a look there.